Okay, simply for time's sake, I'm just going to pick up with part two of this message. I encourage you, if you did not hear part one, you need to go back and at least listen to like the first seven, eight minutes so that you know what we're talking about. The text, which I'm not going to reread again, is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, and then verse 14. Okay? And the storyline goes from an experience at the restaurant, in the restaurant ministry. And um, so you go back to part one and listen again if you didn't listen to that so that you at least know the format that we are working from. We got into the discussion of the finite versus the infinite. Why did God create Lucifer? Why did God create evil? You, you see, there's some things, and my response to my professor friend was, I, I really don't. I don't know the answer. There's some things about God that I will never have the ability to understand. Okay? I just intellectually, if I could understand everything about God, he would not be God because I would be equal to him if I could understand everything about him. And so th this is in this essence of can I explain everything that God did and why he did it? No. Uh, I brought up the Trinity. And I said, right now I'm teaching a membership class in our church situation. And one of the things that we do in membership class is to explain our beliefs and why we believe what we do. <laughs> and I, I was talking about the Trinity. It's like, now let me, ex let me give you an understanding I can explain theologically the characteristics and the dynamics of God. I have been taught that. I have studied that. I know the truth in that. That's not a struggle to me. I can take you biblically through why we believe in the Trinity. I can show you the truths about how the Holy Spirit Jesus and the Father work together as one. I can give you all of the informational realities of it. That isn't a struggle. I can even give you analogies. Somebody taught me this years ago. I used it with a young man a while back when I had a young lady that I was taking through membership class. I used the same thing, the egg. Okay? You have the shell, you have the white, you have the yolk. The egg is not an egg if you remove any one of those. But the shell is not the white, and the white is not the yolk, and the yolk is not the shell. They all are separate, but they go together. That, that's the little analogy. I've also heard used the, the thing of water. Water can be steam, water can be liquid, water can be ice. It can all be in the same format, but they're all separate. Okay, I can give you all of those analogies and characteristics. Can I explain to you the Trinity? No, I cannot, and neither can anyone else. I remember a few years ago, and, and he was a good guy. I'm not, I'm not picking on him. A wonderful professor, teacher of theology. He tried to teach us group of pastors the in-depth thing about all of the things that the Trinity is. You know what that did for all of us? I had pastor friends coming up to me and saying, Mike, I didn't understand any of that. And I was like, hey, don't be worried. I didn't understand it either. So what can I do in my finite? I can give you all of the information 
of the Trinity. But if you want me to explain the awesomeness of God, you're going to be waiting a long, long time for me to be able to do that. Why is that? Because I am finite and he is infinite. So my professor friend brought up Kabbalism, which says that we just simply don't have the ability to understand the infinite. Therefore, there's no sense in us trying because we can't grasp it. I smiled at him. Praise God. Praise God for teaching me what I'm not smart enough to understand. That happens quite often in these conversations that take place because I find myself saying stuff that I didn't even know that I knew. Can you associate with that? Go back again how God has set all of this up by taking my seed away from me. And even before that, bringing a conversation between my son and I that laid the groundwork into this and all of these things that has taken place. And I said, but you see, that's where Christianity changes the game. Because all of the other systems leave you recognizing that you can't grasp the infinite. Let me tell you, I talked to them about a counselor that told me a while back to find something much bigger than me that I could put into perspective I walked out in the nighttime and stood on my sidewalk and looked up at the sky. They say that in our ability of vision that the most that we can actually perceive is some 11 miles of vastness. I looked at the sky, what I was able to perceive, and you immediately felt like this little speck. Why would God take notice of me? Who is this God that would take notice of me? I, I'm insignificant. People get upset at me for saying, why does it matter whether anybody cares or not? I'm insignificant. Stay with me. Now, all we are seeing is just a very, very small portion. We can't see all of the vastness of the, we can't grasp it. There are trillions of stars. And if you want to get into this mind-boggling reality in the book of Psalms, it tells us that this awesome, wondrous God knows every single one of them by name. I told them I've probably got 10 friends in the whole wide world and I have trouble remembering their names. My professor friend laughed and said, I'm with you in that. I'm the same way. You want my finite mind that can't even remember 10 people's names to be able to grasp they they. Guess, and that's all it is. It's a guess because we don't know. They guess that what we know about is that there are some 300 trillion stars. 
And if God was standing beside you and you pointed up to the sky and said, which one is that one? Do, do you wonder why I am in such awe of him and why I think why in the world would that God want to come and dwell in such a broken vessel as I am? So might just settle it. He's infinite and we are finite and we can't grasp him. There's my face again. See, Christianity changed that whole perspective. Moses said into the burning bush, they won't listen to me. Who shall I tell them has sent me? And out of the burning bush, Almighty God speaks and says, I am that I am. You tell them that I am sent you. Ego me. I am. I am all there is. I am all there was. I am all there ever will be. You don't need anything else but me. And then, some couple of thousand years later, Ego Emi stepped out of the infinite and became finite. The great I am. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace stepped out of the finite. Infinite and became finite. And he showed us now, did that mean that we can magically just understand everything about the infinite? No. I still can't understand God. As I said, I can't even understand why he loves me. I, I try to figure that out. He knows that I can't understand that. Why would you choose a useless character like me as I beat on my chest and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner? Why would you call a useless character like me and say, I'm going to make you a minister of the gospel? His choices are infinite. And I am finite. And I come face to face with my mortality and my sin and my character. And I am in full recognition, as Isaiah said, standing in that temple, and I've preached about that before. I am undone. <sighs> I am undone. I can't, I can't grasp him. But that same God stepped out of the infinite 
and became finite so that he could die on the cross and rise again from the dead to save me, a sinner. The professor got that look on his face. He had never thought about that before. In all honesty, I had never tried to explain that before. I've thought about that reality for it as a part of my theology. But see, when we talk about Jesus coming to the earth, yes, he was all man, but he was also all God. And he stripped himself of his glory to become finite like me. And in so doing, he revealed things about the infinite that we as human beings could have never understood otherwise. So why have I come to these little understandings that I have of God? Because Jesus taught us this. So when Jesus says these things to us, it's not just to be blowing smoke and saying words that don't mean anything. When you read that word, it's not just something to be read like any other book. When you read that word, Jesus Christ is manifesting the infinite to you you I am given Jesus said all power in heaven and in earth then he gave the great commission which I will get to in a second and then he backed up the second promise lo I am with you always even to the ends of the earth so I have all of the power and I am with you. So how can you do these things? How can you make disciples? Because I have all power and I will always be with you. This is the infinite speaking to the finite. It is in me. Of late, it, it isn't, and if you have thought that it is, it, it isn't. It isn't a struggle in my faith. I know exactly who God is. I know exactly what God can do. In the middle of all of this situation that has been going on, I have made this statement. I'll make it to you. I put it in the newsletter. Job said it in Job chapter 19 in the middle of despair, wondering what in the world is this God that I thought I was worshiping? What is he doing? I know. My Redeemer liveth. And I'm going to see him. Job was saying, why was I even born? Why didn't I just die when my mom gave birth to me? Why was I even born? Here I sat covered in sores, losing everything, including my children, my wife rebuking me. I have nothing left. No, my Redeemer lives. See, my struggle hasn't been over my Redeemer. My struggle has been over myself. I love my Redeemer. 
He's all I've got. I don't have anywhere else to turn. I lay alone in the middle of the night in a room all by myself. So few people care. I say with Peter, when Jesus said, will you also go away? And Peter said, to who will we go? You're the only one that we've got. The question hasn't been about God. The devil has spoken into my spirit and I've poured water on it and let it blossom. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I never will be. And how in the world is my little broken mind ever going to understand the infinite awesomeness of God? And without that reality, we can't. But Jesus Christ came and suddenly the finite and the infinite was brought into a glimpse. In him, Philippians says, dwelt all of the fullness of the Godhead. So can I still understand? And that's what I was saying to them. If you're counting on my absolute wisdom and understanding, you're in trouble. But I get enough of the glimpse of who this is that my heart begins to cry. We used to sing this song. It was actually a little chorus. Lord, make me like you. Please make me like you. You are a servant. Make me one too. Lord, I am willing. I'm sorry. I'm trying not. Lord, I am willing. Do what you must do to make me like you, Lord. Please make me like you. I'll never be infinite. I'll never be all knowing. But Jesus Christ stepped into the into the finite and gave us an insight. And now I can see God from a totally different perspective. See, before, all anyone ever knew God as was the judge. God brought judgment. You went against God. God would literally open up the earth and swallow you. That's what the Jews knew. That was their perspective. Then, suddenly, God brings grace onto the scene. And now God looks at a broken, useless vessel like me and says, I love you and I will use you in spite of your flaws. 
And he didn't just say that to me. So if you're sitting wasting your time trying to understand God, just stop. Just stop doing it. Now, does that mean that we don't know? No, I spend my whole life teaching people about God. I've been on this video teaching you. But recognize that the finite is never going to understand the infinite. But I can teach you all of these things, and that's not where the key is. The key is, and this is where the conversation came that led into this two-part video. Here's the key, guys. I can teach you all about creation and the flood and and Lucifer and free will and all of these different things. But here's the key. Jesus Christ stripped himself of his glory. The same great I am who spoke from the burning bush stretched his arms and died on the cross to save someone like me and like you too. I hope in the depths of what can be just absolute overwhelming theological that we brought a real truth that made you just stop. My professor friend who is not a Christian was walking out of the restaurant and he leaned over and whispered into my ear. That was really interesting. Am I exalted because I could make a theological discussion interesting? Jesus set it up and made it happen. And he took this person that has been in the midst of absolute despair and to coin my waitress's term made me beam because how can you talk about the glory of Almighty God and not be beaming?